What is up guys? Welcome back for another live in the UU tier today. We're finishing off the series of stealing people's teams uh, today with uh, Joey's team that he used a couple of episodes ago uh, in his UU live with uh, Delmize, I believe. Uh, it's a really cool team. Uh, very, very strong team with uh, Specs, Primarina, Scarfed, uh, Infernape, and Banded Delmize, and the rest is all defensive support. Togekiss usually puts in the most work with this team. Uh, before we start this up, I just want to let you guys know there was a, supposed to be an announcement video going out today, but I actually have to postpone it because uh, things aren't announced yet. So I have to uh, wait until Tuesday. And I also have another video ready that's supposed to come out on Wednesday, so it actually falls perfectly into place. Uh, you guys are going to see that coming up right after the weekend. But for today, we're going to be having a, a nice and chill live. Try to keep it short as usual. And uh, let's hop right into it. Uh, yeah, so there is a series that I want to bring back to the channel, if you guys remember the, um, what did I call it again? Was it, uh, Make It OU? Or, uh, or Overuse It? Overuse It, that's what it was called. And, um, basically I have to wait until all the tiers are finally set, including NU, PU, everything. Uh, and then we're going to start up that series again, and people really enjoyed that when it was going on, so I can't wait to bring that back. Uh, now my opponent is more than likely going to lead off with Primarina here. Uh, I like the I like the Kiss lead, but I also don't like the fact that he could lead with Terrakion or Necrozma or anything of the sort. So let's lead off with Infernape. Uh, he leads off with Primarina. That's kind of what I expected. Uh, we are going to U-turn out here because I don't have another play. Uh, Thunder Punch is not going to kill. We'll go into Delmize. We'll see how much damage this thing does to us uh, as he goes for the Moon Blast. That's almost going to kill. And uh, we're pretty much dead at this point, so I'm just going to throw out a whip. Uh, as we're actually faster, which is fantastic, we're able to knock out his Primarina with a crit. That crit didn't matter. We are banded, of course. Uh, in comes Necrozma, which is definitely not faster, uh, n definitely not slower than me, excuse me. And uh, I think we're just going to go for a whip on his Stealth Rocks and damage this thing. Uh, bring him down to 9%, which is fantastic. And then what we'll do is we will swap into Hippowdon, hit Specially Defensive. Should be able to take any hit. We'll also be giving this thing some sand damage. As he goes for Power Gem, that is not going to knock us out. And uh, we will go for Stealth Rocks right here, which will weaken his Sharpedo, his Gyarados, everything. In comes Gyarados. I'm not letting this thing set up. We're just going for a Whirlwind here, as uh, he's probably going to go for the... Uh, he actually goes for the Waterfall. Okay, good play. Uh, we do not get flinched, which is awesome, as Nidoking is sent out. Uh, now I'm going to sack off my Delmize because I believe that Hippowdon still has some viability in this matchup. And uh, we will just sack this. And he goes for the Ice Beam. Now I think he's uh, he's probably Life Orb. Which is not a great thing because we don't have an Earthquake on, on Infernape. I might consider taking off Close Combat because I haven't found myself clicking it too often. However, in this matchup it could be useful. Um, I still feel like Earthquake might be better just specifically for Nidoking because this team has nothing for Nidoking. Um, it, everything just dies. So I think I have to... Um, I think I have to go into Fortress here. Probably just go for a Gyro Ball, put him in range of a Flare Blitz. Hopefully we can live the Earth Power. I think we can. Um, but let's go for Gyro. Let's see what happens. And uh, we'll play from there. But... I, I think we could go down to this. That's why I'm hesitant about it. Uh, the better play might have been to go into uh, Infernape, U-turn into Hippowdon, and then go back into Infernape and Flare Blitz. But we'll see. As uh, my opponent's taking quite some time to make his play, we will start the timer on him. It's quite an obvious play. It's just go for Earth Power. I don't have a switch in on my team. Like, Togekiss is going to die to Sludge Wave, so... This should be kind of obvious. Um, he only took rocks damage, right? Well, I mean, he doesn't take life orb damage because of sheer force. So, let's see what he wants to do. He might just sack off his Necrozma and keep this. Uh, that's the play that I would make. There's no reason to let this take a Gyro Ball if you're not confident that it's going to kill. Yep, there we go. And uh, my Fortress is slowly gaining back some health. Uh, however, he doesn't have anything that can, like, straight knock out Fortress. Uh, other than maybe Nidoking, like, especially if he gets a crit. But uh, I like that his Nido King is a little bit more weakened now. He will go into his Terrakion here, probably to fire off a close combat. Uh, I am going... Probably Hippo. Um, he might just Swords Dance as well, which is kind of scary. Uh, if this thing is gone, then I could probably spam Flare Blitz. Hopefully. I need to calc how much it does to... Um, how much it does to Nido King. So Nidoking, Wallbreaker versus Infernape Choice Scarf. It probably doesn't kill. 
Uh, Infernape Choice Scarf, Max Attack, Jolly. Uh, Flare Blitz does... Oh, actually, it does kill. Huh. Would you look at that. Alright, let's go for a Gyro Ball then. I don't mind this taking damage in that case. Uh, against his Gyarados, I can always switch out of my Infernape if that's what comes in. Uh, he does go for the Close Combat. That's going to do 45%. Quite a bit, actually. That might be banded. Uh, as we do uh, give him a big hit with Gyro Ball. And uh, does he take us out from here? I believe he does. It did 54. Yep. So, um, I guess I have to let this go down. As good as this is for Sharpedo, I just have to make sure that Sharpe that Togekiss doesn't take any damage prior to Sharpedo coming in. That's the only thing I have to do. So I can just Gyro Ball again. He's going to go for another close combat. That's fine. He's not in Rock's range, which kind of annoys me. Um, just a little bit. I want to calc that damage because I know we're max defense. Let's see Terrakion versus... Let's see, like, a choice card of Terrakion versus Fortress. Uh, defensive Rapid Spin. Yeah, that's definitely banded damage, though, so that's good. Uh, we'll go into Togekiss, and I think we just fire off an Air Slash here, realistically. Uh, just get some damage off on that uh, on that Nidoking. Let's go for the Air Slash. I know he's locked in, so in comes Nidoking. It's going to take a big Air Slash, and it might be slower than us because we're 264 speed. Hopefully he's modest. He's not. He goes to the Sludge Wave, knocks us out. Had I had a little more health there, I would have been able to live that. But now I can go into Infernape. And now we can fire off a Flare Blitz and knock out his Nidoking, which is fantastic. And uh, like I said before, even if his Gyarados comes in, I can come back in with Nave and just start uh, Thunder Punching everything. And Thunder Punch should be able to kill everything on his team, uh, especially with Terrakion solo. We know that it's Choice Bandit as well from the damage on Fortress, so we should be able to outspeed it, no problem. Uh, also, Primarina can take pretty much any hit from Sharpedo uh, if it comes down to it, so he is going to go for the Dragon Dance, we are going to go for the Whirlwind, uh, he's forced to attack us on this turn, and then we can just go into Nape, we are Choice Scarfed, and we can fire off a Thunder Punch and knock out his Gyarados. His uh, Sharpedo needs a double Protect against me, so what I'm going to actually do is switch out into Primarina on the uh, on the first turn. He asked me Thunder Punch as if I'm going to answer that during a game, you know, <laughs> like what? No. You can't see it yet, it hasn't come up on screen, but I'm not going to tell you what I have, bro. I'm going to go for Thunder Punch, knock out his Gyarados, there we go. And he has to go into Sharpedo. Unless he has Bandage Quick Attack on Terrakion, in which case I will switch out as well. But uh, we'll see that. Uh, does that even kill Infernape? Infernape. Uh, Choice Scarf, let's see, Quick Attack. I don't think it kills, there's no way. It's not Stab. Yeah, it does 19 to 23, that's nothing. In comes Sharpedo. I'm not staying in. I'm going into Primarina. Uh, he doesn't have anything that can straight knock out Primarina, so he's going to go for the Protect. I am going to go for the Moon Blast. And uh, even if he switches out, it's fine. Uh, if he doesn't switch out, then I win. So uh, he's going to go for another Protect. That's also okay. The Sand ends. We are just going to go for a Moon Blast here. He's going to go for the Psychic Fangs. He doesn't have Poison Fang. Luckily, we are able to knock out the Sharpedo. We go for Moon Blast. He does have Quick Attack. He does crit my Primarina. But he's not going to crit tw twice in a row, that's for sure. We're going to go for the close combat to show it off. That did a lot, actually. Was that even in the calc? What the heck? Oh, I had Choice Scarf Terrakion on. Choice Banded. Let's see. Choice Banded. I'm just going to say GG to my opponent. Uh, and he uh, did... He got a max roll on that. He got 37% uh, 30, actually. What the heck? He was adamant? Uh, yeah, he was adamant and he still got a max roll, so either way he couldn't knock us out, luckily. Uh, we played that pretty well, I think. Uh, we identified that his, uh, his Terrakion was Choice Banded, which alleviated a, a lot of pressure, actually. Allowed me to go into my Togekiss, get off necessary damage on the Nidoking, just in case he had some bulk investment. And, uh, allow me to win with Infernape. Infernape is also a big win con, but right here, as you can see, Togekiss destroys this man. <laughs> Even Bliss, he can't do anything about it because it's a Stallbreaker set, so it has Heal Bell, Nasty Plot, Air Slash, it can just beat everything, essentially. As long as I, uh, as long as I get off some damage on the Quagsire. Now, I don't want to necessarily lead with Delmize, even though it does really well against the first half of his team. The second half pretty much takes it on very well. Uh, I don't want to take a knockoff either. So what I'm going to do is lead off here with, uh, Fortress. And he leads off with Absol, which is great. And instead of going for the Toxic Spike, because he can easily bring in his, um, his Zatu, I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch, as he actually decides to stay in and Fire Blast. Okay, I should have seen that one coming, yep. Um, but now we can go to Primarina, and basically bait him into going into Blissey. That's going to be the uh, the plan right here. 
And we are going to go into Delmize, I think. Yeah, we're going to double into Delmize as he does bring in the Blissey. We're going to go for the Anchor Shot. I changed one thing on the team, excuse me, which was this had Heavy Slam and Anchor Shot. I decided to swap out Heavy Slam for uh, Shadow Claw. It seemed a little more useful in certain situations. Uh, not having access to, uh, to Heavy Slam, though, might be the death of me, but we'll see. Now, I can't see him going into, uh, yeah, Alamomola or Quagsire. He decides to stay in with his Blissey, which pre is pretty much going to sp spell the end of Blissey, which kind of sucks because that's actually my setup target for, uh, for Togekiss. So maybe that wasn't the best play. But I feel like um, Absol is going to come in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stall out the timer a little bit. Uh, this is kind of, this is a, uh, a little strategy uh, if you guys want to use on the ladder. Basically, this Absol pretty much almost certainly has Pursuit, <clears throat> and it's going to try to kill me right here with Pursuit, and I'm going to uh, pretend I'm switching out and thinking about switching out, and actually I'm just going to go for an Anchor Shot, uh, and he's probably going to click Pursuit, which won't kill. No, he clicks Knock Off. Okay, good play, good play. Um, he has two Magic Balance users, which is really annoying. Uh, I'm going to go into Nape, and we are going to go for a U-turn. And at this point, the only thing that really handles Blissey is uh, Quagsire. So in comes Alamomola. That's awesome. We are going straight into Togekiss. Did I say Blissey? I think I said Blissey. I meant Togekiss. My bad, guys. Uh, now, his Absol might have Ice Beam or Iron Tail. Either one. Who knows? Uh, but Alamomola is going to go for Toxic. I don't really mind that. Again, I do have Heal Bell on this. Uh, and we are going to go straight for the Heal Bell. Not even thinking about it. And then if he wishes up, I'm going for another uh, nasty plot on the following turn. Because he can't risk switching in his Absol to an Air Slash. If he does, then he'll lose it. So, oh damn, huh? <laughs> yep. Yep, that's what this set is. You ready? <laughs> you ready to lose your entire team? Togekiss? Like, the only thing that handles this is Quagsire, like I said before. Quagsire is literally the only member on his team that can actually deal with this. So, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's knock out... Uh, Let's try to knock everything out. If we can flinch Quagsire, I think, like, three times, we win. Finally run into Stallbreaker Kiss. <laughs> yeah. In comes Zatu. We go for uh, Heal Bell. Beautiful. Uh, his Zatu might be slower than us. I'm going to go for the Air Slash. Uh, as it does take 77%, gets flinched. There's one of his Magic Bouncers essentially gone. We will just go for another Air Slash. In comes the Quagsire, finally. Uh, as that takes 34%, so we only need, like, two more flinches on this. Uh, and we're pretty much good to go. As uh, we do flinch it the first time. Let's see if we can get a second one. If we do, then I pre we pretty much win the game at that point. And there's the second flinch, and then we go for another air slash. And as long as we connect, this game should be over in theory. Um, unless Absol has some kind of coverage for me. That's the only way. But he does forfeit, that's going to be GG. And uh, let's move on to the next game. So as you can see, like Infernape and Togekiss are the biggest win conditions. One because it heal deals with slower teams, and the other one because it deals with faster teams. Scarfed Infernape is pretty much not outsped by anything in, in the tier. So... My opponent has a very scary team, however, uh, we might actually lose this one. I'm going to try to play to my, the best of my ability, but you never know. Um, Togekiss does outspeed Volcanion, luckily. However, he has a, a couple of really good switch-ins to Togekiss in uh, Heliolisk and um, Blastoise. Both switch in decently well. Blastoise allows me to set up wh whereas Heliolisk doesn't, so we'll, we'll play around it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to lead off with Primarina because it doesn't actually lose to anything immediately, except for maybe Sludge Wave from Volcanion. But this thing has a lot of spadef, so I'm not too worried. He does lead off with his, uh, with his Cobalion. Iron Head is going to do a lot, but so is Moonblast. And he doesn't have a Moonblast switching on his team. As much as Volcanion seems like one, it's actually not. As you'll see right here. There we go. <laughs> nice and 38%. Get a special attack drop as well, which is awesome. As we are able to outspeed, actually, as he goes through a Sludge Bomb, is not able to kill us. And uh, Moonblast is going to take something out here. Not necessarily. He, he has the Mudsdale. If it's specially defensive, it might be able to take one and uh, be able to revenge me. But uh, he does go into his Cobalion, which is going to take a huge hit and get knocked down to its Sash. And knowing that I'm faster than Cobalion tells me that I want to keep this, actually. And I'm going to go into Hippo here as he decides to probably go for the Iron Head. Uh, yep, there it is. And uh, we'll go for Stealth Rocks right here, which will limit his switch-ins to... Uh, to Volcanion. He has to bring in Blastoise to spin now. We're going to go for Whirlwind as he actually goes for Taunt. Great play. Okay. All right. So let's go for Earthquake. Uh, nothing on his team really wants to take it. And he's going to let his Cobalion go down as a result, which is awesome. Uh, his Volcanion is currently in range of Earthquake. 
So that's awesome. <clears throat> in comes uh, Bowser. We're going to quake this as he decides to go for an Ice Beam. Almost knocks me out. And uh, I'm assuming he's going to go for a Rapid Spin here and we are no longer taunted. So I'm actually going to go for Stealth Rocks on his Rapid Spin. And we're going to start gaining back some health. I'm not allowing this thing to spin, basically. He's going to go for Ice Beam there. Good play. And uh, now I think we have to go into Togekiss and flinch this thing down. Uh, because it's the only thing that will kill it. I don't think uh, Infernape Slender Punch does the job. Let's see. Um, close combat might, though. Blastoise. Mega. Versus Infernape. Choice Scarf. Close combat. Nope. <clears throat> Not enough at all. And what about Thunder Punch? Thunder Punch does even less. So, yeah, Togekiss is the only answer right now as we will just go for an Air Slash here. Uh, if he switches out his, uh, okay, he decides to keep it in. He is gonna get flinched down. We're gonna go for another Air Slash. He decides to switch out, so now he's in range of close combat. That's fantastic. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to sack off Primarina. It doesn't do much for the rest of the game. It does outspeed two of his Pokemon, but that's about it. He's gonna Volt Switch, which is what I was expecting. And uh, he's gonna bring in his Volcanion to let it die. And now we're going to go into Infernape because it outspeeds his entire team. He's going to go into his Heliolisk. And we are Choice Scarfed. He might be as well, though. So I'm kind of worried about that. I'm going to switch out into Delmize just in case. As uh, he does double. Um, and in comes the horse. And we're going to go for a Power Whip. As he decides to bring in his Bisharp. This is going to take a huge hit. Uh, if we could connect, but we don't. Uh, we're gonna go for another whip. He's gonna go for a knockoff and knock us out. That's okay. I'm gonna go into Nape now. Uh, Sucker Punch doesn't do much, and we will just go for the close combat. If he decides to switch out into his Mudsdale, that's pretty much a free switch into Togekiss every time. He decides to sack off his Blastoise, actually, which is great. And uh, I don't want to stay in if his Bisharp comes back in, or this thing for that matter. Uh, I'm just gonna go into Fortress. Let's see what he does. He is going to go for the Heavy Slam. That's gonna do absolutely nothing. He predicted my Togekiss to come in, which is awesome. Uh, and now what I'm actually going to do is get up a Toxic Spike, because with this Toxic Spike up, his Heliolus can no longer freely switch in. Uh, not his Heliolus, but his uh, Mudsdale, which is kind of what I want. And uh, we're going to go for a Rapid Spin right here as he goes for the T-Bolt. That looks like Specs damage, so I don't think I have to worry about uh, Choice Scarf anymore. Uh, and we can just fire off a Flare Blitz, I think? Um, I think Close Combat is actually safer. Yeah, I'm going to go for CC. Uh, now, I don't think that Bisharp knocks us out at minus one. I could be wrong, though. Uh, I know that I didn't see a Life Orb, that's for sure. Uh, Sucker Punch at minus one defense does 54 to 63. So, it doesn't knock us out yet. Uh, we are going to switch into Togekiss here. If he Heavy Slams, then good on him. Uh, he does just go for the Heavy Slam. That's a good play, but he, except he doesn't knock us out. So, that's awesome. Uh, I may actually want to go for the Roost right here, predicting him to switch out. Uh, but I'm gonna go for the air slash as we do we get the flinch he gets the stamina boost We do get the flinch though the poison is gonna start wearing him down. We're gonna go for another air slash You're in range of close combat my friend. There's no way you're not you're specially defensive I'm gonna go for another air slash. We are faster than his Bisharp uh, It is gonna break through and get off the iron head I'm gonna go back and nape and I think if I'm not mistaken Mudsdale For it to take Togekiss's air slash that well Togekiss stall breaker air slash. Yeah, it has to be fully spideth uh, I think 248, 27, we did how much? 25, so yes, he does have to have a lot of special defense investment. Uh, he's probably not max max, but uh, with this, let's see how much Infernape does with a, uh, let's see, Choice Scarf, Flare Blitz, uh, at the moment is doing 62 to 73, so that should be fine. Uh, let's go for Flare Blitz as he decides to switch out into his, uh, into his Mudsdale. I go for Flare Blitz though, so I don't think I'm in range of Sucker Punch. I don't believe so. This is going to bring back in his uh, his Bisharp. We'll go for a Blitz. That does a lot, but it's not enough to knock us out. And we do knock out the Bisharp. We knock out ourselves in the process, but I think that's a win, right? Yeah, that's a win. So GG to my opponent. Had we gone for close combat there, we would have been in range of the Sucker Punch, which is why I didn't click that. Uh, Flare Blitz was always the better play there. So I think that's pretty much going to round it out, guys. As you can see, this team is very, very consistent. It's very nice. Infernape does the job against uh, like stronger teams. Uh, and Togekiss does the job against slower teams. It's kind of the way that Talonflame and Hoop, uh, Hoop on Bound used to work together. Uh, Talonflame loves offense because, well, it used to love offense because of Gale Wings, and Hoop on Bound loved Stall because it absolutely demolished it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the team, guys. Uh, I'll try to leave a pacement to the team uh, in the description below as well. 
I'll just grab Joey's link because it's exactly the same team. Actually, no, it's not. I made a slight modification with Delmize, but you can try it out either way. So I'll leave mine uh, with Shadow Claw. If you want to switch out Shadow Claw for Heavy Slam, if you find that it's working better for you, definitely do that. Uh, with Infernape, like I said before, uh, sometimes Earthquake is better to have than Close Combat just because of those Nido Kings. Um, but Flare Blitz seems to take it out from full anyway. So uh, that was in the sun, by the way. So let's calc without the without the sun. Nido King. Um, without the sun takes 68 to 81 so I was I was wondering why I was doing so much damage but we did need that uh, damage off on Nido King with Togekiss uh, earlier in, in the game in the second game I think it was the second game to be able to knock out Nido King with a flare blitz so sometimes earthquake is better as I'll show you guys in a second earthquake does just a little bit more uh, it has the chance to uh, knock it out after two stealth rock switch ins as well so that's always a thing but uh, yeah that's gonna be it guys if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like down below uh, subscribe if you haven't already if you enjoy the uh, the content the channel make sure to check out some other videos and i will catch you guys later ciao